Hello, I'm Robert Lomas, and this is the third of 17 episodes of a work called Ten Nights in the Black Lion, which was written by the novelist Daniel Owen in 1859. It was originally written as a serial in a magazine called Charles Abala, which was produced by his friend Nathaniel Jones. This is the third episode, and it was first published on April the 9th, 1859. Episode 3. The Second Evening. Within a year my business again obliged me to go to Cedarville. I received a cheerful welcome on my return to the Black Lion. At first glance I didn't see much difference in the look and feel of Simon Slade, the innkeeper. The year had passed him by like a series of summer days. His face was wrinkled and full of contentment, with good temper overshadowing his appearance. Everything about him agreed with what he said. Everything's all right with me. Once again, I found myself in the beautiful, well-furnished room where I had stayed before. Ha! I thought to myself. How many times did I think of Joe Morgan, Willie Hammond and Frank since I was last here? What temptations are they in now, I wondered. As I was thinking about these things, I heard through the door Simon Slade shouting. The only man I could think of lower than him... The old saying is quite true, replied a voice I thought I recognised. Are you referring to old Nick? asked Slade. Yes, I am. It is indeed in character for you this time, said the innkeeper. If you're not the devil himself, you must be his brother. This was followed by loud laughter. I'd never heard such an unnatural laugh, so unlike a man's laughter. It was more like the exclamation of a monster. Who was talking to Slade, I wondered. Then I remembered the voice. I went through to the bar room, and I could see in the porch of the house the obnoxious face of Harvey Green. When Green went into the bar, I went out to the porch to speak to Simon Slade. How is the black lion getting on, I asked. Doing well, was his answer. Excellent. How good are you? Even better. Are you happy with your life? Perfect. You could not get me back to the old mill, even if you made me a present of it. What's happening with the mill? How is the new miller getting on? Uh, not as well as I was, but he's alive. Not doing well? How could it be other, when the man doesn't know how to crush a packet of corn? It's all about that. He had to give up the business and sell the mill with a heavy loss. Who owns it now, then? Judge Hammond is the new owner. Is he going to rent it out? No, I hear he's thinking of turning it into a distillery. This county, as you know, produces excellent grain. If he turns the old mill into a distillery, he's sure to do brilliantly. Grains have had too low a price here over the years, and the farmers feel that, and they like the idea. I always thought my mill was a great help to the farmers. But how could my mill compare with a large distillery? Not at all. Judge Hammond is this richest man around here, isn't he? Yes, he's the richest in the county, and more. You can see at a glance how to double a rich business. How's his son Willie getting on? Oh, excellent. How old is he now? He's twenty. A very dangerous age. So people say, but I don't see it, said Slade. Yes, but you must be working hard every day at that age. I was, really hard, really hard, too hard. Well, that's the difference for someone having to spend all their time to go to the workplace. If a young man of his age is put in a position where they can work well, it keeps them away from thousands of dangerous temptations. I can't say anything then, said the innkeeper, shrugging his shoulders and shaking his head. But I don't see that Willie Hammond is in any particular danger. At this moment another man came over, and Simon Slade took the opportunity to break off our unpleasant conversation. After he left, I went into the bar room. Slade's son Frank was busy at the bar. He had grown a lot since last year. The thin-skinned lad had become stout, bold and daring. Green stood beside him, talking to him. Frank seemed to be enjoying his comments, and his low language. Flora, Frank's sister, a very beautiful and handsome young lady, came in to fetch something from the bar. Green whispered something rudely to her and Flora answered him as sharp as she could, whilst wiping her beautiful face. 
After Flora had left, Green said, Your sister's a beautiful girl, Frank, a right young girl. He talked about her just as if he were talking about a horse or a dog. Frank laughed loudly as Green went on. I'd like to take her as my wife, Frank. I would, but I don't think she'd have me. The only way to find out is to ask her, said Frank, laughing again. <laughs> I would if I thought I had a chance. There's nothing like trying. A frightened heart will never win the love of a fair girl, said Frank, sounding as if he were twenty-five years old. By George, Green exclaimed. Frank, you're growing up fast, I don't wonder. I must talk to your father about you. <laughs> too fast, too fast. After the laughter had subsided, Green left the bar room. You want something to drink, Frank asked me, in a profane and rude manner. I said no, thank you. Here's a new paper, he said again. I took the paper, not to read it, but to sit, and to worry because of what I had seen and heard. I was wondering if it was possible that the innkeeper was really coming along brilliantly and was perfectly satisfied in the pub. What if he earns a lot of money? What if his son loses all the basics of wit and good manners and has to be here to deal with unclean, corrupt, lazy characters and intoxicating liquor? Getting on great? No. No, that's impossible. A man is blind to everything except amassing money. Money? Money? His family is being devastated. While I was thinking these things, Slade came to call me for supper. That's the end of the third episode of Ten Nights in the Black Lion, written by Daniel Owen. It was first published in the magazine Charles Abala on April the 9th, 1859. I'm Robert Lomas and I've just spent the last year translating this, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the subscribe box in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen.